morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our NUIT Tech Talk on getting a gold star for being green. I'm Christina Bello with the IT Communications team and have with me today's presenters Stephanie Folk from the Office of Sustainability and Brian Suarez from Technology Support Services. Before we get started with the presentation today, if you're having trouble hearing me or any of the presenters, please make sure that your volume is adjusted, uh, turn either uh, whether you're using head set uh, speak or speakers, um, the volume's turned all the way up. Also, make sure that you're using a wired connection if that's available. It'll just give you the best connection during the presentation today, since we're going to do a little bit of demonstration. Um, we also advise closing any applications running in the background that are connected to the internet. If you have email or any other web browsers open, again, we just suggest closing those for the best connection. If you have a question at any time, you can type it into the Q&A box down under the, on the bottom of the screen here, and we'll answer those questions throughout the presentation. We'll also give you an opportunity to download the PowerPoint that we're going to go through at the very end. Uh, we're also recording this, and uh, we'll be hosting this and the uh, PowerPoint uh, later today as well. But before we get started, I have two quick poll questions that we want to ask you. And the first is, have you modified power management settings on your computer? And you can answer yes, no, or if you're not sure. And I'll give you all a moment to answer that question. This is actually something we're going to talk a little bit about today for uh, a couple different options that you can take here. Okay. Give everyone one more moment to answer that. Great. All right. And the second question that we have here for you is, have you heard of the Green Office certification process? And again, I'll give you all one moment, one moment to answer that question. It's another topic we're going to be talking about uh, at length today um, and what that process entails and, and how your office can go about uh, getting Green Office certified. Great. Looks like about half the audience has heard about the process before, so that's good to know. All right, wonderful. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie and Brian. Okay. Yep. Um, so um, we're going to start out. Uh, and this is Stephanie with the Office of Sustainability, and we're going to start out talking a little bit about the Green Office Certification Program. Um, and so, um, first of all, I wanted to just give you a little bit of context um, for uh, why this is something that we are pursuing at Northwestern. Um, overall, Northwestern has a commitment to sustainability in reducing the university's environmental footprint. Um, we're currently in the process of producing Northwestern's first strategic sustainability plan, which is expected um, to be released this spring. Um, and the, that plan will set some goals related to a variety of areas of sustainability, things like energy and greenhouse gas emissions, um, our infrastructure on our campuses, how we manage our resources, uh, transportation issues, um, engagement of the campus community, and also um, our curriculum and research. So for some examples of the sort of sustainability goals that um, we're looking at in that sustainability plan, it's things like reducing energy use in our buildings on our campuses um, 20% and reducing greenhouse gas emissions 50% by 2020. Um, and in addition, we're looking at how we use resources in our campus. So using resources as efficiently as possible so that we're also able uh, to reduce the purchase of supplies and durable goods uh, with the goal of 10% by 2020. Um, we're also working on getting the campus community engaged in our sustainability efforts. Um, we can't reach these goals without um, the participation of the people who uh, work and, and uh, study in our buildings. So one of the goals around that is to increase participation in our Green Office program, which we're going to be talking more about today. Um, we've already done quite a few things uh, to get Northwestern moving toward uh, achieving some sustainability goals. So one example of that is uh, the university has invested more than $32 million in energy conservation measures. And um, that and that includes uh, more than $6 million invested in lighting upgrades to more energy efficient lighting. And so far, just since 20, 2010, we've actually achieved a 13.5% reduction in energy use. Um, and to give you a sense of sort of the scope of, of how much that is, that comes to about $9 million in savings every year on energy bills for uh, gas and electricity. Fantastic. 
Um, and then um, as a part of that, um, we can do a lot by just um, managing the equipment and the structures in our buildings, but to really get to our goals, we also need to get everybody on campus engaged. Okay. So that's where Green Office certification comes in. Um, and really, the Green Office certification program is an opportunity for faculty and staff, everybody who works uh, in, our, in our facilities on campus, um, to play a part and to really um, do what they can to help us, the university, achieve our broad communication, or our broad sustainability goals. And um, it really does make a difference because you can see energy use in buildings really is a huge portion of overall energy use in the United States. Um, and you can take a look at this data from the National Re Renewable Energy Lab. Uh, commercial buildings, which is basically energy use in any kind of building other than industry and residential, uh, accounts for about 20% um, of all energy use in the United States. Um, and that includes uh, electricity, natural gas, other energy sources. And um, within those spaces, that last uh, pie chart to the far right shows how we're actually using that energy. So there are things like heating and cooling our buildings, um, but there are also things that our occupants can have a significant amount of impact on, things like um, lighting, how we use our lighting, and then that, that wedge that says PPLS, that's plug and process load. In other words, that's all of our electronics, our gadgets, our appliances, um, everything um, that gets plugged in and is mm -hmm. drawing electricity, um, also known in, kind of in the energy efficiency world as plug load. Mm -hmm. So um, you can make an impact on that by participating in the Green Office program. And some of the benefits are um, saving resources and money in, in our spaces. Uh, there's also opportunities for campus-wide recognition for um, offices that participate, for people who help their office lead them through the process. Um, and you're just helping create a greener, more sustainable workplace. So basically, you would just get started by contacting the Office of Sustainability, and we'd uh, talk with you a little bit about the process, um, make sure that you had approval to move forward with any leadership in your office that needed to be on board. And how you define your office really um, is, is fairly flexible. It should basically be a group of people that sort of share share space, share um, they may share some common areas. Um, and um, so um, you, can, you can define it in any number of ways. It can be in any number of sizes. Um, but so we have like a, a small, in uh, IT, we have a group of about four people who I think, believe have uh, gotten Green Office certified um, and their department is certified. And then we also have some larger departments in IT that have gone through the certification process. So really kind of anywhere in that range um, right. yeah. can so work. There can be some flexibility. There are some departments that, um, as a department, they're scattered across um, multiple small mm -hmm. buildings, such as the little um, the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. structures yep. around campus. Um, so those groups could choose to define their office that for certification as just people working in that one building, mm -hmm. or if their department was um, uh, operating out of multiple locations, mm -hmm. they could work together to get um, to get all of those spaces working as a team. Mm -hmm. So really, it's what's feasible um, for your team, how you think you can get it organized. Great. And obviously, you don't have to go through the certification process to take a lot of these steps. You can do this even if you're just on an individual basis. Right. You can definitely do this. Um, the, the benefit of participating mm -hmm. in the program is um, you get some support from the Office of Sustainability to, to help you um, understand what some of the things are mm -hmm. that you can do, um, get some information, some resources, um, and then to get some recognition for your efforts as well. And, there, and it helps us keep, sort of keep track of what mm -hmm. people are doing at yes. as well. Great. Um, so once you kind of decide you're going to move forward with it, it really is a self-guided process with the Office of Sustainability available to help and provide support and information. Mm -hmm. And you essentially will work through uh, a checklist of activities, and we provide a guide that can help you do that. So that checklist of activities um, really kind of breaks down um, the actions that you can take into these four categories here. So for example, um, there are some things you can do in terms of communication. Sometimes um, people just need a little reminder of uh, what they can do to be more mm -hmm. sustainable, or sometimes um, they just need to know how to do it. For example, they might want to recycle but not be sure what goes in the bin. Mm -hmm. um, so putting reminders or information in places where it might be helpful to people mm -hmm. to help them remember what um, they can be doing um, is counts as sort of communication engagement, mm -hmm. or um, putting in, including some sort of green office reminder in your regular staff meetings mm -hmm. or uh, updates to your team. Um, that uh, is another example. 
We also, um, on the IT website, we have some great resources as well that people can share um, some information about green technology um, and some power management myths that you can help kind of address in your area. And Brian's actually going to uh, talk a little bit about that in just a couple minutes. Um, but there's some great resources there as well. Yeah, and that in the Green Office program, in that guide, you will find some links um, to some of those IT resources as Perfect. well. Um, then another area is energy and water. I won't get into this much because uh, Brian will be talking about this um, shortly. Um, you may have heard that uh, Northwestern is an Energy Star partner. Mm -hmm. um, that's a program of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and Department of Energy. Um, basically, that label means um, that any particular appliance is sort of best in class mm -hmm. for energy efficiency. So that's a great thing to look for. And, um, and then we'll get into uh, power management later. Yeah. Actually, this is, I'm actually going to pass it over to Brian, and he'll talk a little bit about kind of power management study, and then we'll finish going through um, the rest of kind of the checklist. Great. Okay. All right, so Brian, I'm actually going to switch over, and you can do some screen sharing here. And Brian is one of our um, distributed support uh, technicians, so he does a lot with um, customers around the university. Brian, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, so I work in a group called Distributed Support Services, and we provide desktop support for groups that don't have departmental desktop support through a school or you know, a, um, an entity of the university. So basically what I'm going to show you real quick is two things. Um, I'm going to show you how to change your power settings in Windows and in Mac. And there's only a couple steps. Um, we do have instructions on our IT webpage about this, um, as well as those myths that Christina was talking about. So if you have a Windows 7 computer um, or Windows 10, it's very, very similar in the way that you would do it. But you click on Start and then come over to Control Panel here. And then this may be a different screen, but the easiest way to get to it is if you come up to the top right-hand corner and just type in Power. Then it kind of gives you a search result of all the power settings that you can change. So if you click on the top one, Change Power Saving Settings, it'll bring you to this screen here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have it set, so I can change it. Just give me a moment here. But this is where you would change the power settings, and you can go with the preferred plans. Um, now, this power saver one is probably the more recommended. Um, we can go into the setting details by clicking Change Plan Settings here. And so there's two options, um, but you can go into the advanced power settings. But the one that you really want to focus on is the sleep meter here. Um, Depending on the type of work you do, if you have a laptop or a desktop, most, most of the time you want to keep the computer off if you're not using it. But if it does need to be on and you want to allow it to go to sleep, you can change this drop down to different uh, settings. Um, if you wanted to do 15 minutes, 45 minutes, but you probably want to stay under the 15 minute range um, if you're not using your computer a lot. But if you're using it a lot, you can go up to the, you know, the one hour. Definitely do not want this setting. You never want to turn it off to never. This, there's too many issues with that. Um, it could you know, decrease the life of your machine. It can cause oh, some hardware issues. So, plus, you'll be saving a lot more energy if you never use that there. So, so those are the two options that you can change. If you wanted to do advanced and play around with these ones here, you can do that as well. Um, and, you know, like I said before, you want to always turn the computer off when you're not using it. I, I can't emphasize that enough. There are some myths that if I don't keep the computer on, I won't get updates, or you know, I won't be able to access this and that. But really, talk to your IT department and see if you don't have IT, you can you know consult with us here at the um, support center and just give us a call or talk to them about ways that you can you know keep the computer off and save some energy. So the next one, real quick, is I'll swap over to the Mac side here. Depending on how you guys have it set up, you can come up to the little Apple, go to System Preferences. And then in the second row, you'll see a little light bulb. This light bulb has changed over the years. Now it's a, uh, it's, it's a uh, energy saving light bulb. <laughs> yeah. It looks like an LED. Yes. Yeah. So if you click on this here, it has the you know, same basic settings, but the difference is these two tabs. So really, when you're on the power adapter, as you can see, I have the never there, but you'll want to keep the power adapter um, setting as the one that should be less than that 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So this will turn the display off, um, but then you can click all four of those. These are what you want. All four of these, this will um, 
I'm sorry, all three of these here. You want to keep, not the prevent computer, but these three here. Put the hard disks uh, to sleep, and then wait for Wi-Fi, and then enable power nap. Power nap is a new feature in iOS, uh, or in OS 10, um, El Capitan. So it uh, is recommended for that. You can also go to the schedule here, and you can set your computer to wake or go to sleep at a certain time. So it all depends on what you want, but talk to your IT department if you have one, and you know, speak to them about engaging with the sustainability practices that we have and making sure that you're uh, staying green. So uh, that's all I have for now. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Brian, a, a couple questions for you, actually, um, kind of addressing the myths. You talked about the, the myth of leaving your computer on all the time. Um, is that, that's really something that you guys recommend, turning your computer off every night when you leave? Yes, and it's more for two reasons. Number one, obviously, the power saving part. I mean, that's, that's really, you can cut down a lot of energy turning the computer off as well as the monitor if you have one. Because the monitor will show an amber light to say that it's on standby, mm -hmm. but that's actually still drawing a lot of phantom power. And you don't want that. You just turn it off if it's not in use. But the second reason is, even though updates won't apply when the computer is off, mm -hmm. the computer needs a reboot in order for the updates to apply. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, well, you know, it does it by default, and I don't have to do anything. But just for my customers, I recommend at least once a week turning the computer off, if not every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no need to keep the computer on. It's going to increase the life of your machine if you turn it off. And so, yeah, that is a myth that definitely is debunked. Um, what about for people who remote into their computers? Yes. That is a practice um, that we see here at the university. Um, oftentimes, it's associated with you have a machine that has sensitive data. Mm -hmm. This is something that I would recommend to also speak to your IT about. You don't want to be um, remoting into a computer for lots of security reasons, but also, yeah, it's staying on, mm -hmm. and uh, you're, you're only accessing one type of application or data set. Mm -hmm. You're not really doing your normal work. So speak to your IT, see if there's a way that you can you know, get away from remoting in. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to yeah, make sure that there are alternatives to remoting into your computer. So okay. great. Um, and I don't know if either of you want to talk a little bit about uh, power strips and kind of using those as an alternative as well to manage power. Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we have a, a plethora of them, um, all of the office supply websites and things like that. Now, I know that there's some recommended ones, but the ones that I have seen in my line of work are good is the ones that have the switches mm -hmm. to turn them off. Um, sometimes they don't come with the little switch, but then that way you're definitely turning off the power source and running it from the outlet. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is sustainability. Yeah, I think... Um um, a lot. One option. Uh, more and more devices draw standby power. So even um, when they're, sometimes when they're even off, just um, those those big blocks that you see at the end of certain cords, yeah. those can actually draw a little bit of power. So one option is to plug uh, your computer and all your peripherals mm -hmm. into uh, a power strip, mm -hmm. and then flip that switch off mm -hmm. um, after you've turned off your devices, uh, and that will stop all that uh, sort of standby wasted power from going to those devices. Um, you can also switch to a smart power strip. Um, there are some resources um, in the Green Office materials that um, show you sort of how to pick a smart power strip depending mm -hmm. on what you're using it for. And those will sort of sense that some of them are based on one master device. When you turn that off, mm -hmm. the whole strip goes off on. automatically. Um, others sense when um, things are in standby mode mm -hmm. and, and turn down the power then. That's great. Um, so there's some resources to sort of help you pick the right power strip. Great. Um, and Brian, someone had a good question. Um, is there any recommendation or suggestions about energy efficient monitors that people should be using? Well, all of, all of our uh, available products and all of our procurement by, you know, the punch outs, everything's Energy Star rated. Okay. But in terms of the technology, um, you, you're going to want to look more for the LED mm -hmm. as opposed to the LCD. LCDs use crystals and um, can often draw a lot more energy than an LED, which is a light emitting diode. LEDs are like the small little lights that you see on your car remote or any type of little remote that you have, and that draws a significant uh, amount of power less than what you would with an LCD.
And again, if anybody has questions about buying a specific thing, you can talk to purchasing, you can call the support center, we can kind of help uh, provide some suggestions. And obviously, the Office of Sustainability as well can help uh, provide some suggestions there as well. But definitely look for the Energy Star. I think we had it on the, the last slide here. The logo. Yeah, so definitely look for this for any purchases you're doing with electronics. Um, that's a great kind of quick and easy way to make sure you're getting uh, the most efficient thing for your office. All right. Um, great. So um, just to continue a few more categories in green office certification, um, which you've kind of addressed your energy and water conservation issues, um, you also want to look at waste and recycling. And you know that's everything from you know what you purchase to trying to avoid using just uh, disposable items so you reduce your waste that way to when it is time to get rid of things, disposing of them properly. Mm -hmm. um, and you may have heard we recently moved to mixed recycling. So those uh, blue bins and regular recycling bins around campus, you can put your cardboard, paper, glass, mm -hmm. uh, plastic. Uh, those can all go in there. But there are other things you can recycle as well. So that includes um, electronics, um, batteries, lab equipment, refrigerators, mm -hmm. even scrap metal and demolition equipment. Mm -hmm. So before you throw something in the trash, anything like that, check uh, northwestern.edu slash recycle for information about how you can recycle it or con uh, contact our office. And um, in terms of e-waste or electronic waste that we want to focus on, particularly since we're talking about tech today, um, the Office of Sustainability does manage uh, e-waste recycling for the university. And that includes all kinds of electronics and all the things that go along with them, um, mm -hmm. the computers, the cables, CDs. DVDs, mm -hmm. uh, iPods, old cell phones, all of those sorts of things um, you can recycle through the Office of Sustainability. And in fact, it is required um, by law that a lot of these things be properly recycled and disposed of because many of them do contain hazardous compounds. Yeah. So uh, make sure you do dispose of those properly. So for students, you can drop your items off at the wildcard office. And for staff, you can contact the Office of Sustainability to schedule a pickup. Great. And a couple of suggestions on that. Um, I know we've done some uh, presentations recently about um, security, best security practices. Um, and I know one of the suggestions we've had is for people traveling is to have get kind of a cheap throwaway laptop. Um, I guess throwaway is probably not the best word to use in this context. But you know, just kind of a, a, a cheap um, laptop to use when you're traveling so you don't have to take your, your main computer with you. Um, and this could be a good opportunity to use if your office has just an older laptop and you just need to do to check your email, do some word processing, um, things like that. That can be a good option so you're not just throwing the old things away, you know, and getting the new stuff if you have a use for something old. Um, and then also with recycling computers, especially um, for data, just making sure it's being disposed of properly, if there's any information on there that's secure or, you know, personal. Um, just make sure that's taken care of correctly so that, that information is not sitting out there uh, incorrectly. Right, exactly. And for items that are still working, there are also options for donation. Oh, great. Um, and you'll see that as well on our website under Waste and Recycling. Perfect. Um, and then finally, um, we want to think about um, meetings and travel. So that's everything from trying to avoid just Disposable water bottles and mm -hmm. just bring a pitcher and glasses instead when you're hosting people. Um, to thinking about, you know, if there's a meeting that might require people to travel, mm -hmm. um, you can reduce um, energy use from from traveling, mm -hmm. driving, flying um, by um, using video conferencing service. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also going to, of course, be a lot more cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, Northwestern has um, so there's a link in the website to video conferencing services um, like Blue Jeans and mm -hmm. Meeting. Um, and, and then also just things like reducing the paper that's used in meetings um, by distributing uh, materials electronically and reminding people not to print if they don't have to. Yeah. Great. Great. All right. um, so those are that, that really kind of you. I, I think that's enough to hopefully get people started <laughs> on how they can be green in their office. Yeah. Um, we think the, the green office program, we're working on making it really as streamlined and easy to follow along with as possible. So if you are interested in pursuing Green Office certification, um, you can go to our website um, and read a little bit more about it, or you can email us at sustainability at northwestern.edu, and um, we can help you get started with the process. Great. 
And we'll open up for any other questions if people have uh, questions either about how they can manage their power management settings, um, basically anything else you might want to ask about sustainability. We've got a little bit of time, so I'll just open it up uh, for any additional questions. Um, so let's see, I'm actually going to look real quick. There's one or two other myths that I, I actually wanted to ask Brian about uh, kind of the IT myth busting in terms of power management. Uh, so let's see here. I know I have heard people ask about, well, when I turn my computer off, mm -hmm. is it going to take so much energy to reboot it that it's That's really wasting great. more energy? Mm -hmm. but that is, it's just such a tiny um, moment when there might be a little more power used mm -hmm. um, that the time that the computer is turned off yeah. far exceeds any little extra surge of power used to yeah. turn it on. I could see that being more at, like a car in terms mm -hmm. of it starting up uses a lot of gas, but yeah. then once it starts running, right. But uh, yeah, with a computer, it's not. It's, it's a little different. Yeah, it's I still wouldn't little, leave yeah. my car idling, though. Is yeah. It? Yeah. You definitely still turn your car. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, is there anything you guys can recommend? I know smartphones and mobile devices are huge right now. I mean, probably more people are using those than laptops in a lot of cases, especially on a university campus with students. Um, any suggestions you can give about um, sustainable options for those? Um, I know my personal bad habit. And I think this goes to the power strips suggestion is leaving, you know, charging my phone at night and then leaving it plugged in even when I detach the phone. So that's something I'm, I'm trying to make sure I plug my uh, So then to. with that being said, a good option would be instead of using a separate power charger to charge your phone, mm -hmm. plug your phone into your computer. Well, that's a good suggestion. Because then it will use energy from your computer mm -hmm. and it won't draw another device, which would probably be another 12 volts power. So I would recommend doing that. That's a great uh, you know, thing to mention. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, in terms of the, the remote, remoting into your computer, mm -hmm. some of you may not know what that is, but it's mm -hmm. a way to access documents and applications on your computer from away. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually, you know, those files could be stored on something like Box mm -hmm. or maybe okay. an email. And mm -hmm. so then that way there isn't a need to use remote desktop. Mm -hmm. So more information about that is on our IT webpage. We have a file sharing page that uh, could can talk about that. So we have a question. Yeah, there. somebody asked, um, can you talk about the power saving difference uh, in between turning a computer off versus uh, going to hibernate? Um, is it is it still worth turning it off, or can you use the Hibernate setting? Is that still worth? Doing? That's I mean the Hibernate setting is designed for basically what you're describing. It's mm -hmm. more as like you know when a bear hibernates for months, it's going to be sleeping and not mm -hmm. doing anything. But you know you have to understand that even in a Hibernate state, even when a device is in a standby mode, mm -hmm. there is a there's a functionality that allows it to kind of have one eye open mm -hmm. while it's hibernating. And that in itself does deplete energy. I mean, it's going to be sitting on a uh, standby, kind of waiting for an action, waiting for something for it to turn itself on. Okay. And then also, when you come out of hibernation, it takes a little bit more time to load up your computer because it's coming through a state. And, yeah. um, so, I mean, I'm all, we're always going to recommend you know totally shut off unless you know you need to use it right away. But yeah. Um, Again, that'd be something to talk to your IT about because they may have some sort of administration over the power settings, and okay. you know, they. Uh, I know that some groups like to do things all across the board consistent, mm -hmm. so you might want to talk to them first. And somebody else asked, any suggestions on printers and power management of those in certain areas? Yeah, actually, to go along with like the Energy Star and um, you know some of the initiatives that these technology yeah. companies being more green. Mm -hmm. They actually have built into the new printers a power saving mode. Oh, great. Um, it can get annoying sometimes because you won't know that it's off and then you have to walk up to the printer and push the button. Mm -hmm. But yes, the newer printers like the HPs mm -hmm. and um, the Epsons and the Canons and the Brothers, mm -hmm. those will turn off after an hour. I mean, okay. they'll, they'll shut off completely. Mm -hmm. You can change those, but it's not recommended. Yeah. Um, but those are a little different than computers only because uh, they don't have to type the same operating system and all the other stuff in a computer. So yeah, yeah that's an option too. Great. That's yeah. a good suggestion. And obviously with printers, make sure you're printing double sided. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Only when necessary. Yeah. It's pretty easy. If anybody out there that's listening has a Rico copy machine or a big copy machine in their office, Rico has come down with the hammer to say no more default single sided. They're doing great. everything double sided, mm -hmm. and we're finding now that we have to reach out to them to get those changes made. But mm -hmm. you know, 
that's kind of them going along with the initiative. They want to be more green. So black and white, double-sided, should be the standard, right? All right, perfect. Um, so again, if there's no other questions, I think we addressed everything here. I'm actually going to wrap things up, and we just have one, a uh, couple quick feedback questions for the audience today. And oops, here. And actually, the first question I'm going to ask, pull this in here, is if you're interested in learning more about the Green Office uh, certification process. Um, if you could, if you want to type your email address in here, and uh, we'll pass it on to Stephanie, and she she'll get in touch with uh, you and uh, can talk in your area. Uh, let's see. I'll give you all a moment to answer that. And someone else asked a great question about uh, exhibition spaces uh, and uh, construction and a kind of energy consumption um, and the waste in in those areas. Um, so, any suggestions, Stephanie, for kind of recycling or kind of just reducing the waste in, in instances like that? Right. Um, well, you know, one approach is always to think about what can be reused. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, but uh, if you are in a, in a space where there is a lot of sort of construction um, and new things being set up mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis, definitely contact um, the Office of Sustainability. You can email us at recycling at northwestern.edu. Mm -hmm. And we can help uh, figure out the proper disposal methods or reuse methods for recycling right. for any kinds of uh, construction materials, um, light bulbs, mm -hmm. um, even things like scrap metal. Um, make sure that those things either get reused or properly uh, recycled. Fantastic. All right, great. So I'm going to pull this out. Uh, and again, if anybody is still interested, um, there's contact information on the slides that will show you where you can download it. Um, so our first question to wrap up today is, uh, if you learn some, do you learn something new during today's event? Um, and I did, actually. The suggestion about plugging the, my phone charger into my laptop, that's a great, I do that generally, but not as kind of a default, but that's a, that's a great idea. Um, so we'll give you all a moment to answer that question. And great, it looks like just about everybody learned something new, which is always nice to see. All right. One more moment there. All right, and move on to the second question. Oh, so a couple people are still answering. Okay. And question two is, do you plan to apply any of the information you learned at today's event? And whether that's just making some small changes in, to your own computer and, and management settings, or if it's going, you know, interest in going through the Green Office certification process. Um, if you plan to use anything we talked about today, uh, I'll uh, can answer that. And if you're unsure about how to apply um, anything we talked about, do let us know. Um, we're happy to help kind of help you figure out how to um, use the information we talked about. Again, whether it's managing your computer and the power there, recycling, sustainability is happy to help uh, answer any questions with that. Uh, so if you do have any questions about how you can apply these, this information in your area, uh, send us a message, let us know. We're always happy to, to help you um, put this information into action. All right, and our last question here is, on a scale of one to five, five being very satisfied, how would you rate today's event? And again, we always hope you're satisfied. We know you take time out of your day to attend these. Uh, if there's anything we can do to improve the events, uh, any other topics you're interested in learning about, um, any other questions we can answer, we're always happy to uh, make updates and changes. Um, and again, we, we present these based on your input and, and what you're interested in. So do give us feedback. Uh, we always appreciate that as well. All right, so I'll give you one more moment to answer that question. And I'll show you where you can download the PowerPoint from today. All right, wonderful. OK. So to download uh, the presentation, which has uh, some great resources and links in it, if you just click on this PDF file here and click Download File, it will open up a new web browser window for you, and you can download it from there. Uh, as I mentioned, we're also recording this, so we'll have it posted on the uh, IT YouTube channel later today as well. Uh, and everyone that registered will get a link to that when it's posted. Um, but again, so you can watch this, uh, share the, the presentation um, in your area as well. And uh, in two weeks, we have a
our next tech talk uh, coming up about uh, research computing services. If you have uh, anyone in your area who's interested in that, you can uh, register uh, on the IT website for that. And thank you, Stephanie and Brian, for a great presentation. Thank you. Thanks right. for having us. And thanks, everyone, for attending. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>